Hi guys! 2022 was definitely a roller coaster of a year. From members leaving their respective groups, to breakups, to new 4th gen groups debuting and taking the K-pop industry by storm, it was definitely a very interesting year 2022. So today, as the year is coming to an end, I really wanted to focus on the best releases, in my opinion, of this year by sharing with you my top 15 songs. Those are songs that I've listened to the most and that I think are just so freaking amazing. Not only like stylistically or how they impacted the K-pop world, but also just like my personal preference of how many times I've listened to it. Basically, it is my Spotify wrapped <laughs> sort of review that I will be sharing with you today. But before we start, don't forget to share, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It would mean a whole lot. And also, don't forget to share your own list of your top 15, top 10, top 5 K-pop songs of 2022. I'm really curious to know what your top 5 or even your top 3 songs are. The songs that you listen to the most, the songs that you think were just like bangers and changed the K-pop world in 2022. I'm really curious to know. So now that we mentioned it all in my longest intro, let's jump right into it and start with number 15 being Blackpink Shutdown. So this comeback had to have a place in my ranking. Blackpink is definitely a group that I love a lot and that I have been following since their debut days and so with Shut Down I was really really excited to check it all out. Shut Down was definitely the song that I was not expecting. The sample of the violin in the very beginning and all the references to their previous comebacks left me just like so confused because it is definitely very different from what they tend to do like the black pink formula they are really outside of it and on the other hand with all the references to their previous comebacks I was like okay this is the last comeback knowing as well that we had to wait two years for this new comeback, and especially with the pre-release Pink Venom. I was like, okay, it's the end, basically. And we still don't know if it is the case or not. They are currently on tour. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go to their tour because, oh my God, it was so expensive. <laughs> I love them very dearly, but oh my God, super, super expensive. I just couldn't. I was really, really excited for this song and shut down. Definitely did not disappoint. I really love the sample that they use. Uh, it really grows on you, actually. At first, I did really prefer Pink Venom to shut down, but eventually, <laughs> uh, with time, it actually changed a lot, and I preferred and still prefer shut down. It is so freaking catchy. I think the choreo adds a lot of impact to it as well, because it's just one of those choreos that you want to do and dance along. And so I had a blast with shut down. Number 14, we have NCT 127 or 127 or 127, I don't know how you say it, and their song Favorite. So this song really caught me off guard because, well, I'm not the biggest NCT fan. I had the opportunity to see NCT Dream live during the K-Pop Flex Festival and it was really great. I think they are really great performers, but because there are so many subunits, I just get really lost really easily and because I lost the train in the very beginning when they first debuted, right now I think it's too late to catch up, but whenever they release new songs, I still listen to them and this one is really, really amazing. I love the chorus of this song so freaking much. It is very like majestic with the innocent vocals all coming together. The transition between the chorus and the verses is a bit abrupt <laughs> and it changes really drastically, I think. Not as much as some other SM songs, but still there's quite a noticeable difference between one section to the other. I still enjoy the sort of contrast between the verses that are more rap based and the very powerful vocals of the chorus. And then the bridge just killed it for me. SM bridges are the best. Yes, I said it. <laughs> I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but I don't think so. Even with their sort of worst songs or more like weirdly structured songs, whenever the bridge comes up, 
they just let their vocals out and they sing like so freaking well. I love it so freaking much and this one is no exception. It is like so stunning, like their vocals coming together and having like the drum after the bridge. It is so, so, so beautiful. And I think I have to pay more attention to NCT all units. So if you have some recommendations, you can leave them in the comments down below. At number 13, we have 80s Gorilla. So for this one, Gehia. I just said it and I was like, mm, I'm saying it wrong, Gehia. <laughs> so this song is so freaking badass when you are in need of power, of feeling just so freaking badass, you know they have to pick an 80s song to listen to. And it just changes. It is like the right solution for you every single time. This title track is so freaking intense, so strong, so powerful that you just want to just dance along. Especially the choreo is so freaking hard or looks very, very hard. And they give their 200% every single time they perform it, especially sometimes they are singing live, especially John Ho's high notes during a song are so freaking high <laughs> and he's known for that. But knowing that he has like a very strong choreo alongside it and I'm actually, when I'm saying this, I'm thinking about all their previous comebacks and it's always the case, but this time around it just, it had a lot more of impact. I think it is also because of the, um, the sort of the power of the song in itself already just emptied up even more and they're so energetic they're just so wow i kept re-watching all their performances what can i say i fell in love with it <laughs> i'm not the biggest 80s fan i love their title tracks i don't listen like on a daily basis to their b-sides but this performance just made me want to go and rediscover their entire discography once again because oh my god it is so freaking good. I know that I will be saying a lot that it is so freaking good, but this is my top 50 favorite K-pop songs, so I love them all. At number 12, we have Dreamcatcher with Maison. So our post-apocalyptic queens had to have a place in my ranking. Since their debut, I never once had a song from them that I did not like and this one is no exception to that. I love the fact that they still managed to create a storyline with every single one of their title tracks and even in their mini albums and albums, they sort of have a sort of coherent theme all throughout it, no matter what type of concept they do. And Maison is just that one song that makes you feel so freaking badass. Definitely got stuck in my head for months on end. I still listen to it almost on a daily basis. It's not only impactful because of like the usage of the electric guitar and the fact that they are like rock queens at this point, but also in its engaged message. As I say in the song that they really want to save planet Earth and that a lot of people do not want to see the truth and fight for us and so they sort of symbolize that through the envy by them fighting the evil but still losing at the end and it all being corrupted and then it is connected with vision as they still fight the evil but this time around on their own and i find that to be so freaking cool because one they are really really carrying this very engaged message about like global warming the climate change and all of that thing that I don't see often in K-pop songs, then they are doing it by having a very, very strong song. Like the song in itself is so freaking badass, so powerful, and it's definitely one of those songs that you want to listen over and over again. So it's really cool that you can link that to a very engaged message. The envy, the fact that they symbolize it by fighting evil, it's so cool. <laughs> and then when you listen to the rest of the album, the b-sides are great as well. And I hope they will continue to release songs like this one and like Vision and like so many other for many years to come because of how good they are. I feel like I'm doing like reviews of all the songs, which it was not supposed to be the point, but yeah. At number 11, we have two songs, the first of which is Twice, Talk That Talk. So I know that this wasn't their most popular comeback yet, 
but as a once I was still super excited for it and they did not disappoint. I loved this track. As you probably notice, as this is the ranking of my top 15 favorite songs, but still, it is such a great song. I love the vibe of it, the 90s aesthetic, not only with the styling, but also with the sort of feeling of the MV it was really, really nice. I know that it is the current trend to have this like late 90s, early 2000s aesthetic and they killed it. They killed it already with the sort of 70s, 80s aesthetic from last year, the retro vibes. Now we are going to the 90s and I'm just loving the sort of evolution, especially with Twice. They always manage to have this very mature, sophisticated vibe with their cute side as well. And they mix it so freaking well. And Talk That Talk definitely pulls it off really, really well. I love the chorus. It is so freaking intense. And of course, the bridge. I love bridges because it adds a new sort of dimension to the song. And we talk that talk. We definitely have it. Other members have beautiful vocals all throughout it. And it's really cool to have OT9 twice for this comeback as well. I did also write an album review for this one, so if you want me to still do it, you can tell me in the comments down below. And the second song is SNSD's Villain. So SNSD made their highly anticipated comeback as well this year for their 15 year anniversary. I was so anticipating it and the title track Forever was really nice, really uplifting, but the song Villain really stole the spotlight for this one for me. I just love the vibe of it. It is so freaking badass. I fell in love with this track at first lesson. I love Yuna's and yours or your Yun's. Uh, rap verses, they are so quirky, so badass, really sassy, and it just adds to this very like caught chase vibe. I love also how they explain the entire making of this song as it was Suyeon that wrote the lyrics for it and I don't know if she was involved with the composing as well, but at the very least she wrote the lyrics and so she was giving like tips to the rest of the members on how to portray the song. And Tiffany also worked on another song on this album and he was like the producer of it. So it was really nice to have them after 15 years together, having them work and be so involved in the making of their songs. And even though they do not work together all the time, they just do their own thing. And then when they come together, they can show how much they have evolved. And Villain is for me, the example of that. <laughs> it's so badass is what I expect from SNSD and they do both concepts really really well but that powerful elegant um, girl group aesthetic is definitely something that SNSD manages to do so freaking well every single time. So villain, I love it. At number 10 we have Taeyeon with Some Night. <laughs> I was debating for a while if I should put I Envy You instead of Some Nights, but Some Nights is just that one song that I've listened to so freaking much, whereas I've watched I Envy You so freaking much. Yeah, no, let's go with Some Nights. I love this track. So it was definitely a very busy year for Taeyeon. I love the aesthetics of it. I love Taeyeon. She is one of my favorite vocalists in K-pop, but just in general. She has so much emotion in her vocals every single time and Some Nights is the perfect example of that. This song is a powerful ballad and it just carries so freaking much emotion. By the way, I did an album first listen of this album, so if you want to see that, links in the description. I will have so many links, or perhaps none, because I will forget to put them in the description, so you can remind me to do so in the comments. But it is such an emotional track and SM does what SM does best by doing a killer bridge with her vocals being so strong and that soaring high note. Beautiful, stunning. It's Taeyeon, what can I say? She's an amazing vocalist and she kills it every single time. And Some Nights is definitely my favorite song from the album. Perhaps it changed since I did the album first listen. I don't remember which song I picked at the time, but 
still my favorite this one i loved it and listened to it so freaking much Ugh. then we have at number nine i've loved dive Yeah, I know I am so original. I have the song of the year in my top 15 song list. <laughs> Love Dive definitely took the K-pop world by storm. It was such a, an impactful release right after 11. Nobody was expecting it. And I was definitely not expecting it to be as big as it was and still is, because most of the time when a rookie debuts and their song become instantly a hit like Eleven was, their second song or their comeback actually flops or doesn't do as well and I feel like the Love Dive definitely exceeded my expectations in that way by becoming even more popular than Eleven. The fact that it went viral helped a lot I've to become the big group they are now. And then with Afterlike, I think they really solidified their monster rookie title because they only debuted like a year ago with Eleven, which sounds so <laughs> mind blown because they, they grew so fast in popularity. That being said, Love Dive, I love it. At number eight, we have another girl group that has debuted this year, that is Le Seraphim with their comeback, Antifragile. So when they debuted with Fearless, I was here for it. I really wanted to support them because as a big fan of Eyes One, I really wanted to show my support for Sakura and Cheon. And uh, as I've seen in the teasers, it was really different from what they have done in the past with Eyes One, so I really wanted to see the evolution. Fearless was definitely not my cup of tea at first. It definitely grew on me since then, but it wasn't that hot hitter song that I was expecting. I love the choreo, love how much they have evolved since Eyes One, and for the rest of the members, Eugene, she's amazing. She's so iconic already, <laughs> and they have just debuted. But still, the entire group so freaking talented, and with everything that happened with Kim Garam, I was like, oh, how they can move on from that, especially knowing now that it wasn't entirely true what happened and she wasn't as guilty as some people made her to be but that's a topic for another day i was still hopeful that they would be able to make an impactful comeback as now five members and they did anti-fragile is definitely everything that i could wish for and more it is so freaking impactful i love the vocals the vocals are so freaking good the choreo, my god, the, the impact of it. I've watched so many performances of this song. I really want to learn this choreo. Um, and I'm not the one to learn dances like the vocals, the choreo, the charisma on stage, the viral moments that this choreo has. Like everything makes it for a very, very iconic comeback and they nailed it and i think with this song in particular they definitely solidify themselves as being a very very strong group that a lot of people have to pay attention to and especially now with the end of the year award shows the performances the level of charisma on stage and the level of performance that they did it's it's amazing it's amazing and having like yunjin singing opera and having kazua Kazuya, Kazuya, I'm so sorry about the bad pronunciation. I never say those names out loud. <laughs> Having her do ballet dancing on stage, like, whoa, and the entire performance was so freaking strong for all of the award shows. So yeah, I love this group. I'm standing and ugh, so freaking good. Number seven, we have Kwon Eun Bi with her song Glitch. So another former Eyes One member, I was really just hoping that her solo career would expand with her solo debut. I was like, yeah, it was nice, but it wasn't as impactful as I was wishing for, especially as the choreo looked really, really hard and very dangerous at times. 
but the song was missing something. I like the vibe for it, but it was missing something. And I think with Glitch, she definitely found her style, her like genre that she nails. And this song, oh my God, I've listened to it so many times. <laughs> it got stuck on repeat. It's such an impactful, vibey song. And it has those Vogue dance moves. The styling of it is really great. The, the MV, yeah, why not? It does give off the like Chonghua vibe in a way. And I think if she was more popular, this song would have gone viral for sure because of how good it is. It has like a dance break in the last section of it. I think it is something that sort of replaces the bridge, always right before the bridge. So impactful, so good. The vocals are on point. I love the choreo of it. The styling, I'm not such a big fan of. Some of the performances, yes. Some others, no. And the shoes, my God. The stylist, please give her shoes that are her size. They are like huge shoes. She, she doesn't have any other members. Why does she have to be so tall? But still, great song, great performance. I wish more people paid more attention to this one in particular because of how freaking good it is. Number six, we have Chun and Chonghua with Color Me. This song I know nothing about their artist or Chunyi. I know Chonghua, but I was not really expecting it. I played a playlist on Spotify on Shuffle and stumbled upon this song. And since then I've listened to it so many times on my Spotify wrapped playlist. It was one of the first songs. It has such a great vibe, it's such a feel good song. I love his vocals. They are so clean, so clear. And it just it just gives you vibes. You just want to listen to it and enjoy and have a great time. And even then so long, even if I never watched like the MV for it, if there's any, I just like this song and I like it to stay that way. I don't want to pollute myself with like information about him. I will listen to more of his songs. I think I already did listen to some of those other songs. Nice discovery of this year. Big fan. Love the collaboration as well with Changhua. I think their vocals mix really well together and it creates such a great song. It made me think a little bit of the, the song that she did with Rehab. It had that vibe to it. It has a little bit of that retro influence to it as well. They really enjoy it. And number five, we have Stray Kids with their song Maniac. So for this one in particular, I do think that Stray Kids has found their formula. The songs, then the style that goes really well with most of the members and utilizes really well the strengths of every single one of them. And that since God's menu, but they still manage to be very different from one comeback to the other. So you don't really feel like it is a God's menu 2.0, 3.0 and so on. They always have their own unique and interesting color, let's say to it. And Maniac, it definitely has this very unique touch from the chorus, the lower vocals with Felix and then Eugene definitely gives it a different um, allure, allure? <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce that word, different vibe and it makes it so much more intense and mature as well. I love the concept of it, the MV is also very playful and the reference to that screwdriver that is also in the teaser pictures for it and the album cover and I think the concept overall is really well planned out and it makes it for a very like captivating type of release that I really want to see time and time again. I must say I had a blast listening to the song because it's yet again a song that makes you feel really really badass and it is something that I've said countless times off throughout my list but that is something that I'm drawn to when I'm listening to those songs and Stray Kids definitely pull it off really really well. The performance is really really intense as they typically are with Stray Kids but I feel like this one takes it a step further especially as it becomes much more intense in the last couple of choruses. It is even the choreo changes and everything makes it for a much more intense performance and also I love the rap verses. I am a big fan 
of the rap line. I think they are such amazing rappers and they should have more credit for what they do. I'm so sorry about the background noise if you can hear it, but still, Maniac was a blast. I love listening to it. And I feel like the more we reach the top like five songs, the less I have to say about them because for me, they are just top notch. Like Shakespeare really knows well its members and how to utilize their strengths for all the performances. And it feels like they evolve to a certain extent that they know instantly uh, how or yeah, how to utilize all the strengths, which I freaking love. And then before we have WJSN with last sequence. This song was the song that they released after winning Queendom 2, which was a little bit of a mess, Queendom 2, let's say. I wasn't as interested in it as I was for Queendom Season 1 or Road to Kingdom and Kingdom. I thought that the performances didn't have as much impact as they did in the previous iterations of the show, even though they were still great performances like Yorin, she killed it, uh, and WJSN as well, and they all did a great job, but it wasn't as mm, as it was for previous seasons and that might be also because i wasn't as invested in this year version of queendom but still nonetheless wjsn won the show and it was well deserved because the performances are really really great especially when they sang live they were really great vocalists and with last sequence and their mini album or actually singles album sequence i just was in love with it i actually made an album review or album first listen, I don't know anymore, links will be in the description for that as well. I did really enjoy the song, I thought that the MV would look really really beautiful. Sometimes it looked like the props for the MV were a little bit on the cheap side, it didn't look as ethereal as they were going for, because they were more like props instead of CGI, but still it was such a beautiful song, beautiful performance, the high notes, the bridge, my god, Young Jung kills me every single time with her really really strong and powerful vocals like i don't know how she does it but it, she makes it seem so freaking easy to do so like the choreo as well in their outfits i love the makeup as well because like lately we've seen time and time again the very like either very simple or like very blush based makeup and for this uh, comeback in particular they focus a lot on the eyes with pearls and not just doing like the typical smoky eye, which I find to be really interesting. Normally I don't really pay that much attention to it, but in this case in particular I did because wow, they looked really, really nice, really beautiful. Number three, we have Espa with their song Illusion. So Illusion as a pre-release, I was not expecting it to slap that hard. It was such a, or well, it still is, such a, an intense song. When I was listening to it, I didn't know exactly how they would portray it in like a choreo form and a performance, but the way they did it is so freaking good, especially that move. Sometimes it can feel a little bit weird. But the way they did it on stage, it felt so natural and so nice. It was just a badass song. I did really enjoy the title track Girls as well. I've read online that a lot of people were saying that they prefer Illusion as a title track than Girls. I still think Girls is better suited for the title track position, but Illusion was such a nice introduction to this new era of Espa that I couldn't picture it uh, any other way. I think they did it really, really well. I love the vocals, like... <laughs> it's definitely one of those songs that you can listen to it over and over again and never get bored of it. It varies a lot without having the very, like, weird structure that Espa is known for, especially with Next Level. It is very much so standard K-pop. Mon Dieu! My cat has entered the room. She's so cute. Illusion is definitely a great song that I've listened so many times all throughout 2022 and if you have not listened to it already, like, how could you? But if you have not, go listen to it, it's really really good. And now we have reached the two last songs on my list. The first of which is number two, 
New Jeans Hype Boy. I know, how original, but still, I was not expecting it at all to love this song as much as I did. I feel like New Jeans debuted out of nowhere. The marketing and the promotion around this group was not that loud, especially for a group of this size and a group on the Ado, which is a label on the big hit, or actually IBE labels. I was expecting it to be a slow build of introducing every single one of the members, perhaps having a little bit of a, an introduction by doing like a solo or a song like Esper did, and then puff, they would release their first pre-release and then their debut song, which is more of like the typical structure of debuting a new song and doing the promotion for them. But this time around, they were just like, yeah, we're here and then have attention be released as sort of a pre-release and have all the songs on their mini album be promoted almost equally and have MVs and all of that. And I felt like they were really focusing on the music side of the group and not so much building sort of a fandom on their looks only. But no, they decided to focus on the music side, on the performance of it all, and showcasing their talents right away, which I must say I appreciate a whole lot. I think it was a great idea to do that and sort of position New Jeans as a group that is doing its own thing and not really focusing on how it is traditionally done. There was a lot of controversy around the group from the very beginning, but I still love their music a whole lot. I think it was a really nice choice to go with the 90s vibe, the early 2000s Y2K aesthetic. It suits the girls really, really well. Debuting minors is always a thing that I'm not really fond of because, well, the K-pop world is not a safe environment for a 14 year old to start. I must say they are really, really talented and I love their songs. <laughs> like there has not not been one song that I'm like, no, I don't like it. I like the aesthetic of it. Like, it gives off the vibes. <laughs> and Hype Boy was definitely that one song that had everyone on a truck call. Like, having multiple people doing covers of the song, or even on and off there was, or still is in the army, performing the song all together, and all of that, that made the song become so viral. But I think it, it has also that side to it that people love a whole lot and they want to do it as well. Also the choreo, I think the formations are so nice, it's so different from what we typically see in K-pop. And so Hype Boy has all those ingredients coming together to make it such an interesting performance and it just makes you have fun and listening to it all the time. It is the first song on my on repeat playlist and every morning when I'm going to work I start my playlist and I always start my day, or the very least for the last couple of weeks, I always started my day listening to Hype Boy by New Jean. I love their new song, Tito, I think it is. It is also a pre-release for their newest mini album, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I definitely have high expectations for this group and I'm standing them. I really want to see where is next for New Jeans. And last but not least, the number one song on my list. It is, drum roll please. B.I. with his song, Bitter Bitter. Oh my god, this song, I was listening to a random K-pop playlist on Spotify. It was on Shuffle, and then I stumbled upon this song. At first I was like, yeah, okay, why not? I liked his previous songs when he came back to the industry after all that went down with his scandal and everything. It was like, okay, I'm rooting for you. So I started listening to the song, it's like, hmm, okay. Didn't think much of it. And then one day I was at work, I went back to it and I think I might've listened to it like 50 times on that day alone. And then on my Spotify wrapped, I feel like I'm sponsored by Spotify, but I'm not. I guess you guessed it by the size of my channel. I think I've listened to that song more than 200 times since it came out and since I first discovered it. I love it 
that much. I don't know why it has that special thing about it that makes me love it a whole lot. I love the, just the melody, the instrumental is great. I love his vocals and the rap sections. I love the collab with the two other artists that I'm forgetting the names of and I'll put right here. I, I love the choreo. I've watched the performance so many times and I've watched other people covering it. And I know that I am obsessed with a song like For Hype Boy when I'm watching multiple covers of that song being vocal covers or dance covers of it. I know that I am obsessed. And this one was definitely the proof of that. I've listened to it so many times. I just love it. It has that je ne sais quoi that makes it so freaking amazing for me. And sometimes I get a little bit sick of it because I'm listening to it like 20 times already in a day. And I take a break, I listen to something else. And perhaps two days later, I can go back to it and fall in love with it again. I just love that song that much. And with his previous song as well, I'm in love with it. Still not to the point of bitter bitter, but I just love it a whole lot. It is amazing. If you have not listened to it already, what are you doing? Leave this video, go check it out. It is really, really a great, great song. And perhaps even like in terms of music, there's nothing special. They're like there are no like belting or high notes or like a gelatin vocals or something like that. The, it's just like the whole package is so impactful to me. It makes me feel just, I don't know, something. It has this sort of futuristic heartbreak, but still lustful vibe to it. I like it a whole lot. I don't know what else to say. Just love that song. <laughs> love it. It's my number one pick. It wasn't even that hard to do my list this year because of how little I've listened to K-pop. But when I did listen to K-pop, I always listen to K-pop, but when I do, I tend to just like listen on repeat certain songs, especially this year. Normally I don't do that as much. I listen to a variety of songs, but this year, because I didn't pay that much attention to what was going on on a daily basis to K-pop because of work and everything, I just had like those hot hitter songs that I've listened to on repeat and here they are. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. What did you think about my list? Share your own list down below. What are your top 15, top 10, top 5 songs of 2022? I really want to know. Do we have some in common, some not? I really want to know every single thing in the comments down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe like I said in the very beginning of this video. And I hope I will be seeing you in my next one. Bye.